of God and see him in peace. He can execute his judgment on us at any time. So it doesn't, it shouldn't take much for us to throw our hands up and say, Lord, I honor you and I worship you. Hallelujah. I lift you up, God. Lord, you are majesty. You are magnificent, God. I exalt you, Jesus. I lift you up, Lord God. I bless your holy name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy of every praise, Lord God. We bow before you, God, because you're king, Lord. And we honor you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't want to let it go. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We need you, Lord. We need you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My favorite prophet in the whole Bible is Jeremiah. I love Jeremiah. Jeremiah can see now and he can see in the future. I love everything about Jeremiah except for the crying part. Cry too much. Beyond that, you'll know why he cries so much after now, after I uh, get through with this. He says what you aren't supposed to say. He's very detailed in describing his feelings. He goes into depth about how he feels about an issue. The words he uses forces you to create a theater in your mind. Jeremiah 17, verse 13 says, O oh Lord, the hope of Israel. Don't worry, I got the question. God is good. The hope of Israel. Who's the hope of Israel? The Lord. All that forsake thee, all that forsake thee, shall be ashamed. And they that depart from me, Oh Lord, the hope of Israel. All, that means everybody, that forsake thee shall be ashamed. And they that depart from me shall be written in the earth. Written means to be buried in the earth. Because, why? Because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living water. Heal me, O oh Lord, and I shall be healed. Because God is the healer. Save me, O oh Lord, and I shall be saved. Because God is the Savior. For thou art my praise. Behold, they say unto me, where is the word of the Lord? They're mocking him. They're mocking Jeremiah and say, let him come now. As for me, I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow thee. I haven't given up. I haven't backslided. Neither have I desired the woeful day. What day? Thou knowest that which came out of my lips was right before me. I did everything right. I said everything right. I need you to meet everybody. Okay. But not a terror unto me. Thou art my hope in the day of evil. What day of evil? What is the day of evil? Hmm. Let them be confounded. Who's the them? That persecute me. But let not me be confounded. Let them be dismayed. Who's the them? But not let me dis be dismayed. Bring upon them. Who is he talking about? The day of evil. What is the day of evil? And destroy them with double destruction? Who is the them? This is the prophet of God. This is the weeping prophet. And now he's asking God to save souls. No. He's asking God to confuse people, to discourage people, and bring evil, and then destroy them with a double destruction? But then he turns around and says, don't let it happen to me. Who is the them? The them is those that forsake the Lord. Who's the them? All of the people that have forsaken God. Those that disregard the Lord, those that don't want to be saved, those that turn their back on God, those that don't want to hear sound doctrine, those that don't have time for church, those that have more important things to do. That's the them. Do you know what the two most dreadful words in the English vocabulary is? All right, Joel 2. Verse 31, the most dreadful words, the most dreadful phrase in the English vocabulary. Joel 2, thir verse 31, I'm going to tell you in a minute. The sun shall be turned into darkness. What is the day that the sun will refuse to shine? What day is that? One second. And the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. What is the day that the, the moon will be turned? Not red. The Bible says turned into blood. Just like he turned Pharaoh's water into blood. The Bible says the moon is going to be turned into blood. What day is that? Revelation 8, 10. 
And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the mountains of water. What day will that be? When the water is going to be contaminated? It's, the, it's before the great day of the Lord comes. Somebody got to tell you. Somebody got to warn you. The story doesn't have a happy ending. Life doesn't have an happy ending. Not for those that forsake God. I don't want to be here on that day. I want to make preparations to escape the evil prophesied for sinners. That's not for us. We're not supposed to be here on that day. If you slip off a cliff, too late. If the last plane has already departed, too late. If the exam has already been graded, it's too late. If you miss the Lord's return, Jeremiah is asking God to do some harsh things to people that forsake God. Jeremiah 17, 13, O Lord, the hope of Israel, knows he, he's given God his glory. The hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed. I got to read it again. And they that depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living water. This is the crying prophet. He's normally crying. He's normally asking God to help his people and to save people. What happened? Why is he, why is he asking God to do horrible things to people all of a sudden? You know why? Because he's tired. Yeah, yeah, he's tired. This is the crying prophet, but he's tired of the sins of God's people. Those that forsake God, those that think it's no big deal. They've been saying God coming back since I was a kid. He ain't come back yet, but it's okay. The phrase, it's too late, is the worst phrase you can ever hear. It's so final. It's so concrete. It's so etched in stone. It's the most dreadful phrase in the English vocabulary. You don't ever want to hear that phrase. If you think God is being cruel here, he's actually not. If you think God is being a brute, he's actually not. He's very merciful. Remember, therefore, how thou has received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I mean, if you're not careful and if you're not watching out, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Look how gracious God is. Look how merciful God is. Look how faithful God is. He's giving you a whole space to repent. He's, give, he's so nice, he's going to give you a chance to get it right. He's warning you. God said you heard the truth. You heard my preachers. Hold on to it. Don't wait till after this message. Repent now. Fix it now. Get God to forgive you now. Your lungs are expanding, and then they're going to contract. Before your lungs contract, why don't you just say, Lord, I'm sorry. Why don't you say, Lord, I won't do it anymore. Remember, therefore, how, how, hast, how thou hast received and heard. And hold fast, this is God telling you, and repent. Remember, God, what's God's very first message he ever preached? Repent. What's John the Baptist's first message he ever uh, preached? Repent. And God is he's warning you. Don't say God is a brute. He's warning you. He's giving you a chance. One more time, repent, because you don't know what hour I'm coming. The reason why when Jesus was on the earth, God was on the earth, and they said he didn't, he said he didn't know the hour that he's going to return. You know why he said that? Because he's offering mercy to people. How many chances have you had? How many chances are you going to get? Think about your kids. When your kids getting on your nerves, and you tell them you got one, you got one more time. What time are you going to get them? You know? How much mercy do you got? How many more times are you going to put it with? <laughs> I hope I didn't use my last time. I hope to God that I got, I got one more chance. I hope God doesn't give up on me. I hope God gives me one more chance, one more day to get it right. While the blood is running warm in your veins, while there is blood running in your veins, that's the time to get it right. Your heart just pumped one ounce of blood. Before that ounce of blood goes to your body and get back, tell God you're sorry. Repent now before it's too late. Genesis 8, 22 says, while the earth remains, be time and harvest. You know what that means? That means while God has the earth, while you wake up and there's still an earth, while the sun is still shining, you got time. You got time today. Because tomorrow is not promised. The Bible says today, if you hear the Lord's voice, harden not your heart. That means surrender to him. 
How many more times will you hear the gospel? How many more ways will God try to reach you? How long will the Spirit of the Lord continue to strive with you? Toiling and pressing and reaching and pulling with no return on his investment. How many more days will the Lord suffer you to keep on sinning? It's time to get it right. Proverbs 15, the Lord is far from the wicked. Why would you want God to be far from you? You may think the lifestyle that you're living is okay. But the Bible says all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. But the Lord weighs the spirit. In the very first book of the Bible, I think by the time you go, oh, by the time you get to uh, chapter 7, God created in chapter 1 a beautiful earth, a beautiful garden. Everything was perfect. By the time he gets to chapter 7, he kills everybody. He kills everything. He destroys everything. God got sick of the sin and corruption. He got sick of the mixing of species, the barbaric acts of the Nephilim. He drowned everybody minus eight people. Really, it was really five people. But he told Noah's sons, well, I got to return it first. You got to go get a wife. You got to go get a wife. They was actually an afterthought. So he really was going to kill everybody minus five people. God killed everybody. Everything. Rat, cat, the mama feeding the baby, the mama who just had the baby had to die. God killed it all because he's sick of sin. There was four cities. I only know the name of two of them. Sodom and Gomorrah. God destroyed everybody, everything. I talked to a guy who lived a couple miles from me. He said when he went there, he thinks that an angel picked the city up and turned it upside down because everything he found was upside down. Every cup, every plate, every table, everything was upside down for some reason. Until this day, nothing can grow there. So much sulfur, so much destruction. Till this day, you can't build anything. You can't grow anything there. Why did God kill all of those people? The cat? Why did he kill the bird? The cat? The rat? Everything? God had to kill everything. Why? Because he was tired of their sin. God delivered his people. He went and got his people from Egypt. He killed Pharaoh and his entire army. And then he turned around and he afflicted his own people and killed them. Why? Because he's tired of sin. God sent one angel to destroy his own people. And that angel was killing so many people that God had to stop him in the middle and say, Stop! That's enough. I'm expecting you to do all that. That angel was wiping them all out. God got tired of the sin. You get the picture? Remember that dude that was going to Nineveh and he got swallowed up in a, a, a whale? Yeah. But, but they repented. But then they turned back to sin. And then God killed them anyway. Yeah, you see what happens here? You can repent. And God will change his mind. He'll stand back. But you go back to sin, he don't give you another chance. It's over for them. He wiped them out. How can a merciful God be so merciful and destructive at the same time? Philippians 2. For it is, good, it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. God does what he feels like, if he feels like, when he feels like, because he's sovereign. He doesn't take orders from nobody. He don't take the mock chop from nobody. He does what he want to do, when he feels like doing it, if he feels like doing it. He rules, he reigns, he answers to nobody, he doesn't owe anybody anything, he doesn't need anything from anybody, he's God all by himself, he's powerful, he's mighty, and he's a warrior. Yes, I want y'all to remember he's a warrior. How did our hearts become so hardened? When did your heart become so calloused? My heart. When did the heart become so callous? And because iniquity shall abound. That's why. Wait. Because of what? Our hearts got callous because of what? Iniquity. What is iniquity? It's the concentration of sin. And you just keep on doing it. The repeated sin. Just keep on and just have no regard and never repent. That's, the, that's iniquity. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. What happens to our hearts? What exactly happened to our heart? When did it happen? When did our hearts get cold? When did you reach the point when you can watch the news and it doesn't bother you? Nothing on the news surprises you anymore, does it? It doesn't surprise you. Nothing shocks you anymore. When did that happen? When did your heart get like that? When, are you, when, did, you not, when did you become desensitized? When did things that happen don't bother you anymore? Babies having babies. Why don't bother that? That doesn't bother us anymore. We're used to it. Women dumping babies in the garbage can. Women murdering their baby in their own body. 
You you're a walking sepulcher. When when why does it bother us anymore? Pastors fornicating with his own members. There's a man he chopped, he killed his girlfriend, chopped her up, tried to get rid of the body by putting it in a barbecue grill to get rid of the evidence. Because of the stench, the neighbors called the police. Does anything shock you? I mean, do you do you have to go look that up to see if I if I made that up or not? Is it? Are you living in a world where you think no, there's no way somebody can do that? Look 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 how we've gotten. Look at our hearts. This is the world that we live in now. This is the world we live in now. You know why it's so bad? You know why it's so bad that our hearts are being, you know the worst thing about our hearts being so callous? Because we forget how much God hates sin. We forget that he hates sin. God has destroyed for less. People are doing worse stuff now than all those times when God destroyed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The stuff that we're doing now, the wicked, evil stuff that we're doing now, yes. There's no more shock. We're desensitized because sin is so prevalent. It's everywhere. It's in everything. And we play with it. And we skirt around it. And we don't warn people about it. And we watch sin. And we listen to sin. And we like posts that contain sin in it. And the Bible already told you, stay away from the appearance of sin. If it looks sinful if it it doesn't have to be sin if it looks sinful the bible says stay away from it shun the very appearance of evil but just stay away from it. the bible says don't give the devil any opportunities why do we play with sin jeremiah he, this is my prophet he sees all the way into the future and he sees god's people today he sees what we're doing today he sees you he sees me he takes his pen and he starts writing the harvest is past the summer is ending. We still not saved. You still have family members that aren't saved. You know what some folk do on Sunday mornings? We get selfish. We go to church. We can get something from the Lord for ourselves. I want a word from the Lord. Yeah, yeah. I'll go to church for myself. When was the last time you interceded for somebody? When was the last time you witnessed to somebody? Who is in church today because of you? Does everyone in your circle, does your family, your friends, do the people in your friend list, do they all know that God is coming back? Do they know? Did you tell them? That God is coming back like a thief in the night. Have you ever told them that? I think you owe your friends that. I think you owe your family that. John the Baptist's first message, I'm saying it again, was repent. Jesus' first message, after he got baptized, repent. So, we're going to make a plan. Back up a little bit. Make a plan. We need a plan. If you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name, today, get baptized in Jesus' name. Call me. We'll figure something out. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, get him today. Don't wait till Sunday. Today. Get God to forgive you today. When was the last time you opened your mouth and said, God, I'm sorry? When was the last time you did that? When was the last? You, you don't need it? You don't need to tell God. You ain't got nothing. You have nothing to be sorry for. You don't have nothing to tell God you're sorry for, right? When was the last time you said, God, I'm sorry, and meant it from your heart? When was the last time you declared out of your mouth, I'll never sin again? Have you ever? All right, let's make a plan. Let's do it right now. Let's do it right now. Nobody even got to hear you. You can say it inside your mind. God, I'm sorry. I did it. But this time, I want you to say it to yourself. Close your eyes for a minute. Forget about me. I'm going to say it with you so you can see how you but this time, I want you to mean it. I can't make you mean it. I can't make you say it. But I want you to just think for a minute. You know you've done some things. You broke some commandments, right? Okay. It's enough to send you to hell. You told a lie, it's enough to send you to hell. You know why? Because the Bible says all liars have a special part in hell. For a lie, God has a special part for liars. I didn't write the book. If you told a lie, you better get God to forgive you for it before you leave this earth. So just take a moment right now. I don't know what you've done. You know what you've done. It just popped up in your mind. That's how nice God is. He's going to show you. Boom, you need to say sorry for that. You better say sorry. It's in your head right now. You know what you did. You think you got away with it. But the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the good and the evil. It's all you. You did it. So all you got to do is say sorry. And mean it. And never do it again. Not just that sin. Every time Jesus... Every time Jesus encountered somebody and he forgave them from their sin, he always said, go 
in sin no more. He never said don't do that sin anymore. He told them to stop sinning. Sin is a problem. So make a plan. We're going to make a plan. Right now, I hope everybody told God you're sorry. You're going to have to do it a little bit more. You're going to have to convince God that you're really sorry. Right? You're going to have to convince him that you're sorry. Number one, we're going to do a couple things. Real quick, we're going to intercede for somebody. Pick a person that you know, God spoke to you about. Go to them. Stand in the gap for them. Trust me, you don't know what a person is going through. Trust me. People are going through some stuff and they keep a smile on their face. You have no idea what people are going through. All right? Be a spiritual mentor. If you, if you don't have a spiritual mentor, get one. Visit a saint. That ain't your homie. Call a saint that you haven't seen in two weeks. Reach out to a sinner. First natural, then spiritual, which will stint yourself. Cook somebody a meal. Stop being a fuddy duck. Go talk to somebody. You can keep your distance. Send somebody a card. Do a well-being check. Do something different. They may not come to church, but you can send them this video. They might not come to church, but you can talk to them about the Lord. Remember I told y'all I met a 15-year-old boy. He's never been to church in his life. His mother never been to church in her life. His grandmother been to church one time for a funeral. That's what we're dealing with. They're not going to just stumble into church. They don't just walk in. That guy is not going to just walk into church. We have to go get him. We have to send him information. We have to do something different because we have to be busy doing something in ministry. And God knows I can use y'all help. I can use y'all help. I can use y'all help because I'm trying to reach the lost at any cost. And the final and the most important step, what can you shave off of your own life? Romans, for if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify, that means shave off, kill the deeds of your body, the stuff that your flesh want to do. Your flesh wants what it wants right now because your flesh only lives now. It will not go into eternity. So it wants to enjoy itself right now. That's the reason you have these proclivities. That's the reason you can't control yourself because your flesh is powerful. Your flesh wants to get what it wants right now. And the Bible says to kill that desire. Kill it graveyard dead. Fight it. Fight the urges. Just say no. Make Change your environment. Change your friend group. Delete some people. Do whatever you got to do, but you need to shave some stuff. You know what you need to stop doing. You know. You know what you need to let. Do it now. Make up in your mind now. I'm going to stop doing it. I'm going to do this less. Just, 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 just trust me. Just a little bit. The Bible says a little leaven. Leaven the whole lump is destroyed. John said the, it's the small foxes that destroy the vine. He also said you got to lay the axe to the root. You got to get to the problem. You got to get to the root of the problem. And you got to do this quick. How much How much time do you have? Time is running out. One day it's going to be too late. We're so busy. We're ripping and we're running. We're doing errands. We're going about our day. We're going to school. We're going to work. But take a moment and realize real soon it won't even matter. Real soon, it won't be no work. <laughs> yeah, it won't be any bills. Your degree won't even matter. It'll be irrelevant. Even the sin you're currently committing won't matter. But it's okay. Because God said, keep on sinning. It's okay. You, you, you think that I just wasted my time talking. No, I'm telling you what the Bible says. Tomorrow, nobody's going to be available to preach to you. So YOLO, enjoy today. If you're a liar, keep lying. It's okay. If you're a fornicator, keep shacking up. If you have malice in your heart, keep it. If you have jealousy in your spirit, keep it right there. You can keep all your bad habits. It's okay. That person that you refuse to talk to, it's okay. Don't talk to them. Whomever you got something in your heart against, it's all right. Keep it there. God is finally tired. He's tired of these God is love messages. He's tired of these prosperity pimps that call themselves preachers. He's get rich quick schemes. And he's tired of warning you and me. He's tired of sin in the earth. He's tired of sin in you and me. He's warned you to repent. He's warning you right now. God is tired of our wicked ways. When I was writing this message, I thought about a time where I did this probably 20 years ago. And I thought to myself, Lord, talk to me. What exactly do you want me? This is such a harsh message. What do you want me to say? And I feel like, and my wife will tell you, I never ever say that God said. But this time I'm going to tell you, God said to me, this is the last time you'll have to preach. You'll never have to preach this message ever again. He 
You can tell God is tired. You can tell he's bringing destruction and judgment for the final time. There is going to be a final time. Jeremiah said, be not a terror unto me. Thou art my hope in the day of evil. What day? This day. The last day. The day when it's too late. So keep on just being moral. That's all it takes, right? Just be moral. Just be good. Just be a good person. That's all it takes, right? Keep on just being a believer. That's all it takes, right? Don't do everything you can to get the Holy Ghost. Because it don't matter. You're a young person. God will let you slide, right? God said he, he that is unjust, let him be unjust. I didn't write the book. This is what God is saying. Let him be unjust still. The word still means right now. It's okay. Right now, let him. If you're unjust, let him. It's all right. He which is filthy, let him be filthy. Why is God talking like that? Because he's tired. He that be righteous, he be holy. Let him be holy still. God is tired. You can tell this is the last moment. God is not coming back to be a meek and humble lamb. He's done that. He let them rip his hair out of his face, his beard out of his face. He let them spit on him. He let them punch him in the face. He ain't coming back like that. He's not coming back to die on a cross. He's coming back with judgment and to start a war. God is heading towards the horse with his saddle in his hand. Listen to me very careful. Once he saddles that horse, it's too late. Look, there's going to be somebody. There's going to be one person. I can see him. I can see this one person walking down the aisle to get saved. What if that's the last person? What if today is just a bonus day? Today is a bonus day and tomorrow God is going to accept the last soul. There's going to be a day. There's going to be a last person. There's going to be a last soul that God is going to accept. What if you are the last person to repent? Thank you, Jesus. Whatever you do, whatever you're about to do, whatever you plan to do, Whatever your plans are today and tomorrow, if it's not plans to get God to forgive you, why not? When, when do you plan for that? And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. This is the day of evil that Jeremiah was talking about. If nobody ever told you, there's going to be a last day, a day when God is officially tired of sin. Today the horse has no saddle. When tomorrow comes, the horse will be saddled. What will you do? What you gonna do? Once the horse has been saddled, it's too late. What you gonna do? Today, if you hear my heart, my voice, harden not your heart. What if this is your final warning? What if you never hear a preacher preach this again? What you gonna do? And said to the mountains, and the rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, this peaceful, loving God, and from the wrath of the Lamb. Look, look at what people do. These are the people that forsake God. Remember we talked about the people that forsake God? People, eh, I'll get saved another day. Uh, not now. I have things to do. I got so much. I'm going to get my life in order first, and then I'm going to come to church. church before. I don't have time for that. Those people, look at what they're saying now. They're talking to a rock. They're talking to a mountain. And they're telling this rock and this mountain, hide me from God, that loving God, right? No, this is an angry God that's tired, sick, and tired of sin. What will you be doing one hour before he comes? Taking your chances. What will you be doing when he's placing the saddle on the horse? Will you be found in deep prayer and worship? If you aren't saved right now, if you aren't filled with the Holy Ghost, how much time do you have? Jeremiah is praying, let it happen to them. Who's the them? Would you be the them that he's praying that it happens to them? Is you, are you the them that he's asking God to give double destruction? It's crying time. It's time to cry out to God. It's time to tell God I'm sorry. It's time to say, Lord, forgive me. It's time to say, God, give me one more chance. It's time to realize that it's not worth it. If the Lord comes in the next hour, what difference did it make whether you went to work, whether you had money, whether you had all the riches of the world? What difference does it make if God comes back tomorrow? You're not taking any of that stuff with you. And the things that you're doing now that you're trying to hold on to and you're trying to find a scripture to justify it and the stuff that you're doing and you're trying to figure out if there's a way where it's not so bad, it won't matter because you can't do it in heaven. 
You ain't playing no worldly music in heaven. You're not watching that foolishness in heaven. You're not hanging around with those people in heaven. They won't be there. Today, 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 that's my last time. You'll never hear this from me again. I will never, you will never hear me say it again. Today, right now, within yourself, take a moment. Everybody just take a moment. I feel so hurt in my heart that I hurt God. Every sin that I've committed, it was against him. I hurt him. I crucified him all over again. And I'm sorry, God. I'm so sorry, God. Please pardon me. Let me slide, God. I heard you had a sea, God, and it was called the sea of forgetfulness. Can you take my sins? Can you? Stuff that I did. Can you take my sins, please? Cast them into that sin. Don't remember them no more, God. Please, let me slide, God. There's going to be a lot of people that's going to miss it, God. I don't want to be one of those people. Please take me back with you, God. Please, when I see your face, God, I want to see your face in peace. I want you to smile when you see me, God. Please don't destroy me, Lord, with the rest of the, with the, rest of the world, God. Let me slide, God. I know I was wrong. And I know what I did was wrong. And I know I was wrong when I was doing it. And I did it anyway. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Y'all can talk to God for yourself. I'm going to do whatever you want. I don't care. But I'm sorry. And I'm going to get it right. For the things I did today. For the things I did yesterday. Please, God. I'm begging you to forgive me. I'm going to live right, God. I'm going to live holy. I'm going to walk up right before you. I'm going to obey every word in the book. Just help me. Please help me, God. I'm going to live holy, Jesus. Give me one more chance. Give me, I know I used up all my sins. I know. I know. I know. I said, I know. I know. I said that last time. I said, give me one more chance last time. And you keep on giving me a chance. Every morning I wake up, you got more mercy for me. You let me slide again and again. But this time, God. I know you're tired. I know you're tired of sin. I know you are. I know. I can feel it, God. I can hear your footsteps, God. I can hear you on your way back, Lord. And I know you're tired of sin. Look at the stuff that we're doing, God. Look at the stuff that the church is doing. Look at the, the stuff that, that we're doing, God. I know you're tired. And I know you want your people back. I know you want to have fellowship with us face to face where we can touch you. I know you want that. You desire that. And you're giving us so much space and time. You're giving us so much mercy. We don't deserve this, God. We deserve your judgment. For every sin we committed, God, we deserve your judgment. So, God, I'm asking you, please, have mercy. Have mercy on me. Take me back with you, God. Help me to understand that nothing else matters. Please, God, spare me, Lord. Spare me, God. Spare me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. May the Lord bless you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to have her bless you real quick. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lord.